Hi there, I'm Canadian children's book author Anita Dare. I've been recording readings of first chapters of my various novel. Today I'd like to read to you from my very first published novel by uh, published by Orca Book Publishers out of Victoria called Flight from Big Tangle. It was inspired by a real life forest fire that ripped through the community I was living in in northern Saskatchewan in 1999 called the Mallard Fire, which you can Google if you're interested and find out details. That is the reason I am wearing this very fashionable flight suit. I haven't presented this book in classrooms in years, and so uh, I'm surprised I still have this. It was very fun. This book is about a girl who is terrified of flying. It's a physical fear, um, and she wishes she could get past it. Her mother and father were both pilots, so she pretty much grew up in the back seat of an airplane. Um, but her father went missing the year previous, and since then she has developed this terrible fear of flying. So now it's her and her mother. And in this story, she goes for a walk in the woods one day, and there's a forest fire that she has to escape from. And in the end, she ends up having to fly with her mother's help, talking her through it. She has to fly her mother's float plane, just a little hop to save herself and her neighbor and her dog. Will she succeed? I have to read the story. Chapter 1. The cabin of the small float plane was hot, yet Kaylee shivered. Her head pounded, her stomach looped-a-looped as if she was on a Ferris wheel. If her mom didn't land the plane now, Kaylee was going to throw up. If anything, this time was worse than the last. You're looking a bit green, Kaylee, her mother said into her headset mic. Kaylee pushed her own mic to the side and nodded weakly, her long black hair damp and sticking to her cheek and neck. It had never been like this when Dad was around. Okay, I get the picture, Mom said, and turned the nose of the float plane back toward the tiny bottlenecked bay they called home. Kaylee pressed her forehead to the window, gazing past the main body of the lake to below toward the thick boreal forest beyond, an army of jack pine and popular tamarack and birch, warriors with green wool tunics tattered and worn from battle, each leaning on the next for support. The wild, wild woods went on past forever, and she and her mom lived smack in the middle of the whole tangled mess of them. Kaylee breathed deeply, in through her nose, out through her mouth. Within minutes, they were back over the narrow channel that joined Booker Bay to the larger lake. A year ago, Kaylee had loved flying, never got sick from it, and she desperately wished that time back. Ever since she could remember, when the leaves began to turn, she and her parents would fly their small float plane south to St. Lucia, a hot, fertile island on the eastern edge of the Caribbean Sea. Dad would make it an adventure, taking a different route each time, stopping along the way in the United States in places they had never been. St. Lucia was home for Dad, though it wasn't where he was born. The Donnelly family had immigrated there from Ireland when he was eight. Papa Donnelly worked for the Air and Seaports Authority and would often visit St. Lucia's two airports. Dad went with him whenever he wasn't in school, watching through chain-link fencing as planes landed and took off, hanging out in briefing rooms where pilots filed their flight plans. No one was surprised when he grew up to be a pilot. He was flying a charter for a tourist company when he met Mom. She had been sent to Florida by the provincial government for a special flight training. This was before she started flying the big CL-215 water bombers and decided to enjoy a vacation in the Caribbean before heading back home. Dad joked that she had liked his airframe and that the rest was history. Living in two countries wasn't a problem for mom and dad. After they got married, they'd fly people and freight around St. Lucia and other nearby islands from September to May. When the rainy season arrived in the Caribbean, the forest fire season was just beginning in Canada, so north they'd go to fly water bombers. They said that they flew for hire and for fire, and that flying was in their blood and probably in Kaylee's too. Okay, hun, hun, hang on. The nausea tightened to a hard nut in the pit of Kaylee's belly as her mom angled the plane nose down on short final. Her heart pounded in her ears. Her chest and neck burned. She closed her eyes, unable to watch the final moments. As soon as the pontoon slapped the surface, the nut dissolved, and she opened her eyes. Thanks, Mom, Kaylee said, staring at the scrape on her knee, wishing it had been better this time. Mom didn't get many days off work, but when she did, she and Kaylee would sometimes ask if when she did, Kaylee would sometimes ask if they could try a short flight. Mom must have known that lately Kaylee would rather do anything than climb into an airplane, but she always said yes. 
Kaylee was determined to get past this recent and unexpected fear. She had to. Sometimes, when her mom was at work, she would sit alone in the plane listening to the water lap against the pontoons and dock, her heart thumping against the wall of her chest. She'd remember the way it used to be, soaring past candy floss clouds, gazing at a patchwork land below. She'd force her pulse to slow by concentrating on her breathing, sucking air in through her nose and slowly out through her mouth. Don't worry about it, Kaylee, her mother said gently, maneuvering the plane toward their private dock where a tricolored basset hound sat watching them, his tail thumping. We'll keep trying. I'm sure it will pass someday. I know, Mom, Kaylee said, but she didn't. And that's chapter one of Flight from Big Tangle. Ah, oh, basset hounds. There's a basset hound in this book called Sausage. We used to have a basset hound named Copper, and he kept me company every morning as I was writing this book. I would write every morning. In the afternoon, I would edit, and the next morning, I'd be back at it, and my faithful hound dog would sit beside me every day, all day. At first, a little confused and wondering why I was sitting still for so long, because this was my first book, but he got used to it. Copper's long gone. It was such a joy, though, to, to name him in this book, Sausage. And the reason I called the Basset Hound Sausage in this story is when we moved from La Ronge in northern Saskatchewan, which is where the, my imaginary town was set, where that fireplace, uh, fire, forest fire took place, we moved to Yellowknife after that. And my girls and I would walk uh, our dog, our Basset Hound, Copper, um, through parks and whatnot, and kids would yell out, is that a wiener dog? And if you if you know a wiener dog is often the nickname for um, a little dachshund. And basset hounds are much bigger, but they still have that long body and short legs, just like dachshunds do. So we'd say, no, 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 he's not a wiener dog. He's more like a sausage dog, which is bigger. Anyway, <laughs> so that's where sausage, that's where sausage, the dog in this book, got his name. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day.